Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. Today I'm going to discuss methods for applying enamel to your projects. The most common way to apply enamel is to sift it, but there are some other techniques that are available to you should you have an odd surface to fill in. If you look right here, I've got three different examples of pendants that were made using the saltwater etching technique. Now these first two have been enameled using a technique called wet packing. Now the wet packing is used predominantly with cloisonne or champlevé. This is basically an, a technique which provides you with a small area to fill in. So you're just filling in that surface and avoiding the other areas in surrounding cloisons or cutaways that in the champlevé. Now I want to fill in one of these areas on this piece here and isolate it like I did in the other two. So I'm going to move it here and you'll notice that I'm using a Prussian blue 2680 80 mesh medium expansion in Thompson enamel. And I'm going to apply it using either a spatula or a paintbrush. Now this spatula is something you don't need to buy. You can just make one. All I did was I just hammered the end of a piece of wire and I got a nice little spatula. Now the way that this works is I've hydrated the enamel using clear fire. Clear fire is a gum or a glue that will secure the enamel in place. Now you don't want to use this at full strength. You do want to dilute it slightly with distilled water. The reason why you use distilled water is because you don't want to use water from your municipal water supply which might have minerals or other chemicals in it that might discolor your enamel. So once you have it hydrated, it's basically not going to get into the air. So this is a very safe way to work and I can avoid using my dust mask. Alright, so let's fill in this round area first. What I want to do is just use the brush and pick up some of the enamel. Now I'm going to put on my glasses so that I can see clearly and so I don't get anything in my eyes. Okay, and I can move the enamel over here and you see it sticks to the brush and it's really easy to just kind of apply it just to the area where we want it to go. Now if you want to be really, really, really accurate, you can also get a squeegee paintbrush or just have paper towels handy in case you need to move some of the enamel away from the outer surface. Okay, so I'm going to clear this brush and I'm going to take a piece of paper towel and just wipe it out. And now one of the things that I want to do is I want to remove the excess moisture from the top. And if my brush is dry, all I need to do is just touch the moisture at the top and then just wipe the, br the brush again to take the moisture out of it. But be careful not to remove any of the enamel. Okay, I've done about as much as I can. Now, the way that you dry this out, and you do want to make sure that the piece is thoroughly dry before you fire it, a good way to dry it out is to put it under a heat lamp like this. The heat lamp will warm up the piece and evaporate any moisture out of that area. But if you don't have a heat lamp, you could just place the piece on a warm surface. Now I was firing some other pieces prior to starting today, and my cooling surface is actually still a little warm. So I can just place this right here and let the heat from this bench block help to evaporate away some of the moisture that's in that pendant. We'll get back to firing it in just a minute. Okay, so let me set this aside. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is sifting. Now, we all are familiar with sifting onto a flat surface such as this. So this little test tile was sifted with a foundation white to create that white surface. And that's really cool because it just gives an easy, even coating to that surface. But if you want to do it in a more controlled manner, what you could do is create a stencil like this one. It's basically just a piece of paper that's cut out and I can lay that on top of my, my sample piece and now I can sift a color onto it. Now before you 
start working with the enamel, remember it's dry, so you need to put your dust mask on so that you don't inhale any of it. Okay, I've got my dust mask on and I'm ready to work with the dry enamel. I just simply want to lift some up with the sifter. I'll knock the sifter to get the excess off the edges. And then I'll just bring it over the stencil and allow it to fill that flower. Now, use your both hands and carefully pick it straight up and you get a perfect flower. I'll just get rid of the excess that's on the tool by placing it back into the container. Now I'm ready to transfer this piece over here to our torch area and I'm ready to fire it in just a moment. Okay, now the sifting method can be applied or used to apply enamel to a curved surface, whether it's curved like a bowl or curved like a dome. Here I have a little dome surface. Now, the best way to do this is to use the clear fire. I have a little bit of diluted clear fire in this cap and using the paintbrush I'm just going to paint a little bit over the entire surface. Just need a very thin coating of it. And the interesting thing is, is that this surface has indentations on it that will take the enamel and actually apply an interesting depth to the enamel. All right, I'm going to reach back in with the sifter, knock it off the edge. Now in this case, I'm going to work over the paper and I'm going to angle the piece to receive the enamel evenly. Okay, I can take that out of the sifter, knock it off my finger, and apply it to our firing area. Now, to clean your finger off, just use a paper towel, wipe it off, and throw it away. This is a little bit wet, so we're going to let that dry out slightly before we fire it. Okay, the one that was drying here on the bench block appears to be completely dry, so I'm going to move it up top to be fired along with the other two. So let's fire all three of them and see what they look like. Okay, the first one is going, and you can see where it's darkening up, and the enamel, it's beginning to fuse and turn to a dark blue. The second one's taking a little bit more time because there's already an enamel surface on there. Now you see it beginning to turn into burnt sugar, and now it's fusing and flowing into the little flower shape. The last one, it's getting that burnt sugar look and fusing and coating the entire surface, giving that piece a lot of depth. Okay, looks like we've got great success. All right, so here is the one that was fired with the enamel applied through wet packing. Here is the sifted enamel, sifted with a stencil onto a flat surface. And now here is the one where it was sifted onto a domed surface that had a little bit of texture to it. And you can see that we get good color out of all of them. Now, of course, we would probably pack everything on this one before we would really fire it. Right now, it's a little bit dirty. But here you can see where the color looks beautiful on top of that foundation white. And here you can see where the texture gives a certain depth to all of the little details that were hammered into the surface of that dome. I hope you have fun applying enamel to your projects. Check out our other videos and products on the OnlineJewelryAcademy.com. If you like this video, be sure to share it with your friends, like us on Facebook, and check out our other videos. Thanks for watching.